Well, hi everyone, I'm Judy Elliott, and coming up today on Lifestyles for Women, we all experience those dull aches and pains from time to time, but what happens when frequent pain begins to impair your quality of life? Today, we are joined by Dr. Joshua Hare with Hamilton Neurosurgery and Spine Center. Dr. Hare specializes in pain management and is here to talk with us about chronic pain and what treatment options are available. You don't want to miss this show right here on Lifestyles for Women. We'll be right back. Well, hi everyone, I'm Judy Elliott and welcome again to Lifestyles for Women. Today we have with us Dr. Joshua Hare, who is with the um, Hamilton Neurosurgery and Spine Center. And um, certainly, Dr. Hare, we uh, appreciate you coming and spending some time with us today. Thanks so much for having me, Judy. I appreciate it. Um, and we're going to be talking about, uh, I guess, more like chronic pain and some of the options of treatment that might be available. But let's talk about you, if you don't mind, first. Sure. Sure. Uh, I know you are um, re relatively new to our community. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your, your background and your family and what you'd like to share with us. Sure. So I grew up in, uh, I grew up actually in Rome, Georgia, so not too far away. Mm -hmm. uh, my family moved to Cleveland, Tennessee when I was about 13 or 14. So again, not too far away from here. Uh, that's actually where I met my wife was in Cleveland, Tennessee. So that's what brought us back to the area uh -huh. uh, once we finished training. Um, I did my uh, uh, college at uh, Sanford University in Birmingham, Alabama. Mm -hmm. uh, did my uh, medical school in Atlanta and then uh, did my residency and fellowship at the University of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we've been here for about five months now. Uh, I mentioned my wife before, um, her name is Ryan, and then I have two uh, children, Cash and Taylor, who are nine and eight. So. Well, great. Yeah. Great. Well, welcome to our community. Thank you so much. Proud to have you here with us. Thank you very much. Uh, tell me a little bit about, uh, you specifically um, uh, were trained in a unique um, uh, type of um, study. Tell me how that translates to, to patient care. Sure. So my initial training way back in college was in sports medicine. So I've been, been in and around um, pain-related issues for a very long time. Okay? Uh, at the University of Kentucky, I did an anesthesia residency and then did a, a year fellowship in interventional pain medicine uh, where we spent uh, a year dedicated completely to interventional, interventional type procedures, uh, the management of medication, a variety of different things uh, that, that lead us to, to have a very firm understanding of the spine and not only the spine but, but multiple areas of the body that, that pain can be generated from. And then taking that into, into the clinical practice, being able to apply that uh, in a way that's beneficial to patients. Right, because a lot of people may have those type of pains, but they think they have to live with it for forever. Absolutely, that's, that's our biggest goal, is to take people who are maybe limited by pain or, or inability to, to function the way they want to, and really take them to a, to a level where they can enjoy their life, where they can do things without pain, and really increase their functional abilities. And that's, that's one of the primary things we try to do mm -hmm. uh, at the Spine Center. Right, and you know, chronic pain, um, can be such that uh, it almost controls your life. It is. It's, it's really debilitating, especially in its most severe forms. Um, you know, it's one of the most common complaints people present to doctor's offices, so low back pain and neck pain are two of the most common complaints that, that we see across the board in physicians' offices in the United States. Uh, the economic impact, uh, not only the cost, but you know, loss of work, a variety of different things are very, very, very uh, critical, and they have a huge impact on our community and our, and our country. Uh, so our, our goal is to take people once again and try to rehabilitate them in a way to where they can function, where mm -hmm. they can enjoy their life, and they're able to do the things that they'd like to do. Right. Now, I know it, being at Hamilton Neuros Neurosurgery and Spine Center, where is your office? So our office is over on Memorial Drive. Uh, it's in the medical office building right across the street from the hospital. Um, what's unique about the, the Spine Center is that we have a, a multidisciplinary practice. So we've got neurosurgery. Um, with uh, Dr. Perret and Dr. Pittman. We've got physical medicine rehabilitation uh, with Dr. Bunker. We also have um, Tom Boris, who's a, a, a renowned physical therapist uh, in our clinic as well. Uh, in addition to myself, who uh, once again, anesthesia and, and pain medicine. So we really come at, come at the pain related problems from a variety of different angles and really try to, to get you whatever your problem may be to get you in the best hands and make sure we do everything we can to get you to, mm -hmm. to feel better. Right, so as you mentioned, there's, there's a great team there together that works in, in making that happen. Exactly, and, that, and that's, our, that's the idea behind kind of what we do is to try to put together a, a lot of different people and a lot of different pieces uh, to help people rehabilitate it and really, really get control of their life back 
able to manage their pain better. Um, and, and through physical therapy, through if you need a surgical consultation, um, if you would benefit from medication management or injection therapy, we have all that there to offer patients. So it, our goal is to be, um, not only for here in Dalton, but regionally to be a, a place where people uh, would come to look for help that, that they may not be able to get other places. Right. Think, think that there is, you know, and know that there is some solutions to that chronic pain. Absolutely. It, certainly there, there are some problems that are very challenging to deal with, but we do everything we can to make sure that patients are able to to increase function and, and really, really get a better quality of life after they see Right, service. right. We're going to take a break, but when we come back, we're, we'll spend more time um, talking about also treatment options, some of the things that, uh, you know, that's great for our, our audience to know that you don't have to always be in pain. You can have a better quality of life. Okay. So, all right. So you stay with us here on Lifestyles for Women. We'll be right back. Well, hi there, and welcome back again to Lifestyles for Women. As we continue today uh, on this segment, we are talking with Dr. Joshua Hare, who is with Hamilton Neuro Neurosurgery and Spine Center, and we are talking about chronic pain and um, some of the treatment options we're going to be discussing today as well. But um, Dr. Hare, let's talk a little bit about when you talk about chronic pain, exactly how is that defined? So chronic pain is, is simply defined as pain that kind of exceeds what we would normally expect from a painful condition. So some, some depending on where you look, can be anywhere from three to six months, okay? Uh, at that point, it would fall into a different category of, of chronic pain as opposed to acute or subacute pain. Mm -hmm. right? um, there are a large majority of people, or a large number of people total that fall into the category that develop chronic pain for a variety of different reasons. Um, <clears throat> What we try to do, again, is, is try to find those people and figure out exactly what we need to do to help them manage the chronic pain and actually improve their, improve their situation. But, it, but the impacts of chronic pain on, on our community here in Dalton are, are really, really robust. There are millions and millions of dollars uh, in lost work. Um, things such as you know, low back pain and neck pain are responsible for some of the mm -hmm. more office visits than, than almost anything else uh, in relationship to just overall physician visits. So there certainly are a large majority of, uh, of resources allocated to this problem. Uh, we're just trying to figure out a way to manage it more efficiently uh, mm -hmm. and get these people uh, back to, to functioning at a high level. Right. Are some of the, um, the pain caused from maybe past injuries or just overload of so there, there, are, there, are, there are a lot of different potential pain generators when we talk about spine-related pain, okay? There are things that everybody hears about on a regular basis, such as disc, um, the vertebral bodies themselves, uh, the nerves uh, in and around that come out of the spinal cord, uh, the joints in the back and the neck called the facet joints. So there are a variety of different potential pain generators that are located in those areas. And it, the reason that they would come to somebody like us is to figure out exactly what the cause was and then to treat that cause uh, to mm -hmm. help get them the maximum amount of relief. Mm -hmm. Right, because sometimes you, you have no idea what's caused the pain. Certainly. Most people present to us in a, in, a, in a manner that says, you know, my back hurts, my neck hurts. And we have to kind of, uh, through a history and physical examination, through imaging modalities, figure out exactly what is causing their pain. And, and that will allow us to, to figure out how best to treat it. Right. Now, what, what is um, your philosophy on, on the care of patients with chronic pain? Okay. We try to use a multi-dimensional approach, okay? And, and what I mean by that is we utilize medications when, when they're appropriate. So for certain situations, a variety of different medications. That doesn't just mean opioid-based pain medications, but muscle relaxants, anti-inflammatory drugs, neuropathic pain medications, mm -hmm. all in concert to try to, to try to help the patient as best we can. We also utilize very heavily, and what my focus is, interventional solutions to pain, okay? Be that injections, uh, implantable devices, um, a variety of different procedural-based things that, that may be mm -hmm. beneficial to patients with chronic pain. Uh, in addition to that, we utilize physical therapy, um, also um, psychology, and, and just, just helping people understand that this is a real problem. We're going to do everything we can to, to help you deal with this problem, um, but we really need to attack it from a multitude of different angles to get the best results. Right. So in, in, uh, with that, I would think every, every patient is different in how they react or respond, or so you kind of have to... Absolutely. It's... it's, it's, it's anything but a, a cookbook approach. So it's definitely tailored to each patient. So we have to, one of the things that I enjoy is, is watching people come into the clinic, figuring out exactly what their problem is, and then putting together a plan or a regimen that's 
mm -hmm. and then watching them progress and get better. Right. Okay? Um, but, but certainly it's personalized and, and everything, the same things don't work for every patient. So we really have to be careful about the right medications, um, the right interventions, and, and trying to get them, again, uh, to be as pain-free as they possibly can be. Right. And, and the types of pain, I think you mentioned earlier, was mm -hmm. back, back pain, neck pain, Certainly. knee we, pain. Knee pain, hip pain, shoulder pain, elbow pain. We, we work closely um, with a variety of different other specialties in our community. So we, we certainly see patients with all types of pain, mm -hmm. regardless of where it is. We see a lot of patients with headaches. We see a lot of patients with low back pain, neck pain, mm -hmm. any kind of joint-related pain. Right. Um, and we, we feel comfortable managing those patients. But certainly, uh, when it's indicated, we, we work in concert with orthopedics, um, mm -hmm. with neurosurgeons there in our clinic as well, uh, to get these patients into the right hands to make sure they get the sure. best care possible. Absolutely. Now, I, I suppose also it's not just an um, age category of pain. That can probably goes from, you know, younger in years up to, to older or senior. Yeah, at our clinic we don't, we don't deal specifically with pediatrics, so you know most of our patients are over the age of 18. Certainly there are exceptions, sometimes we'll see patients that are kind of fall into that category of 16 to 17, um, but, but it, it spans all spectrums of life, mm -hmm. so it, it's not just isolated to, to our elderly population. Um, there are all, all ages are involved in, in, in unfortunately in, in chronic pain related scenarios and we're certainly uh, happy to take care of, mm -hmm. of all those patients. Definitely. And, and I, I would think if you if you are in chronic pain, it's better to go ahead and be proactive and find out what it is so you don't have to maybe possibly live several years with that pain. It's, it's very challenging and it's very debilitating to patients. Mm -hmm. So we, we see a lot of coexisting anxiety and depression sometimes as a result of being in chronic of pain. Course. Because as I'm sure you know, whenever you're, you don't feel well or you're hurting, uh, it's very difficult to, to keep a positive outlook mm -hmm. and, and, and really move forward in a, in a meaningful manner. So that, that certainly happens. And if we can get on, get, it, get on the problem early, as opposed to waiting for years and years, right. then we have a much better chance of success right. in, in helping these patients. Right. What is the cause of, of neck pain? I know we talked briefly about neck pain. Sure. What, what's the cause? So most commonly, the causes of neck pain kind of fall into three major categories. Okay, You have muscle-related neck pain, which is really common, um, disc-related pain, now, which can result in nerve compression. People hear about herniated discs or pinched nerves along those lines. Uh, and then also the, the facet joints, the little joints along the, the, the side of the posterior aspect of the neck really are the, are the main major causes of, of neck-related pain. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got very targeted treatments for, for all of those potential causes, um, but those are the, those are the main categories of, of neck-related pain. Okay, all right. Not to mention stress. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No. Well, when we come back, we're going to start with the, the last segment. We're going to talk more about the, the new treatments okay. that's being offered. Uh, Dr. Here, I appreciate, again, you staying with us. Uh, and uh, we'll be right back with you here in just a moment on Lifestyles for Women. Stay with us. We're back with you here on Lifestyles for Women, and we are, again, uh, continuing our conversation today with uh, Dr. Joshua uh, Hare, who is with Hamilton Neurosurgery and Spine Center, and we're talking about, actually, on this particular um, segment, Dr. Hare, we're going to be talking about the treatments if you're suffering from um, chronic pain is one, one item. Uh, what are the new treatments for um, chronic pain, say, let's say knee or hip yeah. So traditionally, we've been limited as far as our options for treating chronic knee and hip pain. Uh, it's essentially been limited to physical therapy, uh, intraarticular injections, which are steroid-based injections into the joints. Uh, and there's a couple of, of, of newer products that have been around for a few years um, that deal with a substance that's made from rooster comb with a hyaluronic acid uh, derivative that, that have been shown to help some patients with specifically knee-related pain. Uh, we're pioneering now with, through the hospital to bring a new technology here, which we're really excited about, for chronic knee and hip pain. It, it essentially takes a, uh, a method, a modality that we've been using in the low back and neck for many years and translated it over to the knee and hip. It's called radio frequency thermocoagulation, which is a big fancy word for, for heat energy. Uh, and specifically in the knee and the hip, it's called cooled radio frequency. What it does is, is it's able to block the pain fibers uh, that are generated from the, from the knee and the hip. Um, 
using a percutaneous or needle-based technique uh, for up from anywhere from eight months up to 24 months at a time. It's something that doesn't take a terribly long time to do that's potentially uh, very beneficial for these patients. What, what our target audience is at this point uh, in working with, with orthopedics is, is people who are not good candidates for, for total knee or total hip replacement, mm -hmm. or maybe those patients that fall into the category who've had the replacement done but has still have some persistent pain. Mm -hmm. uh, so those would be the two major groups that, that maybe benefit maybe benefited most from this, mm -hmm. okay? Um, it's done in a two-part series. So there's a diagnostic block, which we do first, which is using local anesthetic. We numb up those areas, and we see how much pain relief they get. If their pain goes away or they get really great relief, then they become a candidate at that point for, for the cooled radio frequency. Um, it's a newer procedure, so it's only been around for the last four or five years, but it's really gaining a lot of popularity in a lot of, part, a lot of parts of the country. There are big randomized mm -hmm. controlled trials that are going on now. Uh, I was speaking to some of the, the national leaders a couple weeks ago about it, and they've really gotten great results, the guys who are doing the trial. So it's certainly a, a potential uh, alternative for patients or something to help patients with chronic knee and hip pain. Uh, again, working in concert with our orthopedic surgeons, if, if they have patients who don't necessarily fall into the category of somebody who would be benefit, benefited by a total hip or total knee, that might be something that, that we could offer them. And hopefully my, my hope is that we'll have that available to them in the next three or four months. Right. And will that procedure be um, performed in your office? So that procedure would actually be performed as an outpatient uh, procedure, either in the uh, ambulatory type area mm -hmm. uh, or the outpatient uh, department over at the, at the hospital. Okay. It wouldn't be performed in our office at this point. Now, certainly at some point it very well right. may be once we get everything set up in the clinic. But at this point it would not be. Right. So what are um, some, some of the other advanced treatments that are uh, offered at the Spine Center? So we try to do uh, the, what I call the full spectrum of pain medicine, okay? So that, that would include any type of injectional-based intervention. So you hear about epidurals, nerve blocks, um, all major joint injections. Um, we do also do uh, intrathecal pumps for, for certain selected patient populations, and that's actually where you place a catheter and put medication directly into the spinal fluid. Oh. Um, that's more of a focus of ours in, in cancer-related pain. Mm -hmm. So patients who have malignancy-based pain, uh, we, we consider utilizing that therapy just to try to help those patients be as comfortable and as pain-free as they can be uh, to be able to enjoy their life. Uh, the other um, more uh, advanced therapy that we utilize is something called spinal cord stimulation. So it's a very uh, unique therapy for patients who have chronic neuropathic mediated pain, and that's just pain that's originating from the nerve roots, okay? It's very common in patients who have a, a back surgery with, with persistent pain, uh, also things like CRPS or RSD, uh, or any kind of neuropathic related pain uh, in the extremities it's effective for. It's also done as a two-part process where you have a trial, and then if, if the trial goes well and you get great relief from your pain, we can do an implant. Mm -hmm. It's also done as an outpatient uh, mm -hmm. at our ambulatory center there. Um, it, it's a very unique therapy. It, it, the idea behind it is, is very interesting. It's, it's based on something called the gate control theory of pain. And not to get too, too in-depth, but um, it essentially interrupts pain signals, the transmission from the, the exterior of the extremities up to the brain. And so it stops in there. Um, the reason that it's able to work is the brain's hardwired and it actually goes and, and interrupts uh, the, the dorsal columns and the spinal cord, uh, where a lot of the sensory, sensory function is and doesn't allow the pain signals to be transmitted up and actually covers it over with a, with a more comfortable paresthesia type mm -hmm. sensation. Very interesting. Um, what is spinal cord simula um, stimulation yeah. and also, um, and who is that helpful for? Right. So again, it, it's a therapy that's helpful for patients who have had lower back surgery but still having persistent problems. Mm -hmm. um, any kind of pain going down into your extremities, be it from your neck into your upper extremities or from your lower back into, mm -hmm. your, into your lower extremities. Uh, if you haven't responded well to surgery and some of the more basic interventions, that's something that may be beneficial for you. Um, those are the, the biggest patient populations that we've seen it uh, help. Uh, but certainly, you know, based on, based on everybody, uh, the patient's complaints, and if they do have neuropathic type pain, then we could, uh, that may be something that benefits those patients as well. Right. And um, again, you're located, uh, Hamilton Neurosurgery and Spine Center is located across the, from the hospital. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it's on Memorial Drive. Uh, it's in the big glass professional building right across the street from the hospital. We're in suite 100. Uh, and again, we have uh, neurosurgery, uh, anesthesia and interventional pain, physical therapy, and also uh, mm -hmm. physical medicine rehabilitation, all under one roof. So I think it's a, it's a unique place for people to come. And, uh, you know, everybody that comes through, we try to treat them very well, uh, just like we would a family member, and, and mm -hmm. do the best we can to make sure that, that 
they get the care we need, regardless of whether or not it's, they get it from us or not, but make sure they get in the right hands. Right, and a lot of that, again, as I think you mentioned earlier, is getting to, to know a little bit of history. You know, how long has this been going on? And sure. of course, that's important as well. One of the big things that, that I think we, we can provide that, that is, 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 is a challenge outside of our setting is that when the patients come into the, into the center, they get a one-on-one -on -one consultation with myself or one of the, one mm -hmm. of the neurosurgeons. So it, they really get, an in-depth evaluation and we try to get them in the best mm -hmm. treatment plan we can from the very That's beginning and, and figuring out what's going on and, and getting them the best possible treatment they can have. Okay, certainly you can, um, when you talk with your primary physician, make sure that they understand that you're having this and would like to further, uh, some further options as well. So sure. definitely can give your office a call. Absolutely, yeah, we're, we're happy to to see uh, any, any patient that has a chronic pain related problem. Okay, thank you so much Dr. Hare again for being with us. It's been very educational. Thank you for having me here, I appreciate thank it. You. And thank you for being with us here on Lifestyles for Women. Until next time, we hope you have a great day and we'll see you next time.